What's up guys, it's Wally, and today we're going to be continuing our series talking about different terror type Pokemon and how to make them competitive. And this time we're going to be talking about a fighting type Gothitelle, which is actually really nice because it ends up removing a lot of the weaknesses that you originally have. So we'll get into this video, but before we do, as always, if you guys are new here and just haven't yet, please make sure to go down and hit the subscribe button. If you guys do enjoy the video, please make sure to drop a like too. Normally, Gothitelle is a Psychic-type Pokemon, which means that it does have three weaknesses to Dark, Ghost, and Bug. However, it does have two resistances as well, which are Fighting and Psychic, which, of course, is itself. Now, offensively, it does hit two types for super effective damage, which are Fighting and Poison. However, Steel and Psychic do resist it, and, of course, that horrible immunity that Dark has to Psychic. But even with that horrible immunity, I still think that Psychic moves hit really hard, and especially with Psychic Terrain up as well. Speaking of that immunity, once we do Terrastalize, not only are we going to have a stab move that is able to hit Dark-type Pokemon, but we're going to have one that is able to hit them for super effective damage. Plus, you'll have the ability to greatly reduce the amount of damage that you'll take from a Dark-type move that goes into Gothitelle, which I really think is the most important part of this Terrastalization here. Also, there is no crossover between the weaknesses of Psychic and Fighting, so no matter what happens, if your opponent thinks that they're going to do a super effective move, into Gothitelle before it terrestrializes. After it terrestrializes, there's no potential way for that to actually happen. So this terrestrialization is great, especially for someone like Gothitelle, which is mainly a support Pokemon. So you wanna be able to keep them out on the field for as long as possible. And if you're able to kind of mitigate that, uh, that damage that you end up taking, because you're able to kind of make those weaknesses into resistances, then that really bodes well for a supporter like this. Of course, the one type that doesn't become a resistance would be Ghost. However, that does hit as neutral damage. So even though we wouldn't really be making that, again, a, an actual resistance, at least we do kind of make it from a 2x move down to a 1x move. So I, I think that is actually another really great aspect of being able to change its typing here. So after terrestrializing, we will have three weaknesses, which are to Flying, Psychic, and Fairy. However, we do have three resistances as well to Bug, Rock, and as we mentioned before, Dark. And as I said before as well, there is no crossover between the weaknesses of Psychic and Fighting. So we wouldn't expect a move that would be super effective to our new Fighting type to go into us. Of course, Flying and Fairy are both neutral effective moves into Psychic, so it's very possible that we could see them, but we definitely wouldn't see a Psychic type because, I mean, they wouldn't do a Psychic type into a Psychic Pokemon. So this is something that could take them by surprise. And in fact, like I said before too, two of the weaknesses that Psychic has end up becoming resistances when you change. So if your opponent thinks they're doing a super effective move into you, chances are it's not going to be a super effective move. It's going to be not very effective. So again, that surprise right there, I think is a really great thing with Gothitelle. Offensively, fighting type Pokemon hit five different types for super effective damage. And that's normal, ice, rock, dark, and steel. And those are some really, really useful strengths to have. Trust me. There is a big trade-off though, as there are five types that resist your moves as well, which are flying, poison, psychic, bug, and fairy. And of course, as we all know, there is that one immunity to ghost as well. So unfortunately, we can't hit ghost type Pokemon despite the fact that they can hit us. So that's a little scary. And also with all of those weaknesses, that is kind of tough to deal with from a fighting Pokemon standpoint because you do have so many weaknesses to deal with. And especially in this era of terrestrialization, I mean, Pokemon can kind of change their type on a whim. So if we think we're doing super effective damage into something, there's a possibility that it could change into a type where we're not doing super effective damage and potentially maybe no damage at all. So that's really tough. But with a support Pokemon like Gothitelle, I think we can do some really cool things. So here are a couple different ideas that I had for Gothitelle builds. So I'm going to show you guys a couple different builds, mainly because, you know, like I said, Gothitelle really is more of a support Pokemon. So... You know, the terrestrialization really is just going to be defensive. You know, you're kind of taking away weaknesses and, and kind of changing things up and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, the first one really is just going to be more of that kind of support mon. But the second one will be the more unlikely option, which is making it more of an attacker. Well, the special attacker, but, you know, same type of thing. But... For this first one, you know, there are ton, tons of things that you could do with Gothitelle. It has a really cool move pool here. Uh, the stats here, again, because it really is just going to be a defensive Pokemon and a support Mon, uh, we put all of the EVs into HP and then split it be between uh, defense and special defense. 
Now, the reason why, you know, I, I kind of split it up this way wasn't necessarily because I think this is the right split, but it's because I don't necessarily know what the meta is right now. So, you know, figuring out between, you know, what its new weaknesses are going to be with, you know, either flying, psychic, or, um, or fairy... Like, you know, whether they're physical or special, like, that kind of remains to be seen. Especially with Fairy, now that I see a lot of play rough out there. Like, you know, you kind of have to cover for the physical defense, too. So, either way, that's kind of why I split it up this way. I think once we figure out who's going to be the most used Pokemon, once we see a little bit on the ladder, I, I think then we can switch it up and kind of figure out uh, which defense really needs more of the EVs and, uh, you know, the type of... Uh, nature that you can have as well that'll kind of affect that too um, as you can see this one is a calm nature so it is plus in the special defense minus in attack because we're not going to be using the attack at all um, as you can see gothitelle does get trick room so if you want you could always end up making it sassy which is plus special defense and minus speed um, so you can always go that way as well uh, it just depends on you know what kind of support you're using it for if you're not using it for trick room or anything like that Obviously, you don't want to go sassy. You, you want to go, uh, shoot, what was that? Uh, calm. Sorry. Uh, so you can go that. So either way, it just kind of depends on what type of build you're doing. Uh, looking at the abilities, you know, for this one, we're going to go with the hidden ability, which is Shadow Tag. Um, and one of the fun things about this, because uh, the ability basically means that your foes can't switch out. Like, they're stuck on the field until Gothitelle is either gone, off the field, like, or back in the party, you know? So... Those Pokemon have to stay out there, so I know Gothitelle is a great Pokemon uh, for, like, a Parish Trap team. You know, so... And, like, I know te uh, typically, like, Parish Trap usually goes with, you know, your opponent only has two Pokemon left, so they can't switch out. But, again, the cool thing about Gothitelle is that even if they do have, you know, three Pokemon or even all four Pokemon, if Gothitelle's out there and they can't switch out... Yeah, that's kind of a trap right there. So if you use Parish Song on them, you can knock them out... And, and, you know, not really have to do much damage because you don't have to worry about that. So, obviously, with that, you would want to be able to um, have, like, Protect or something like that on there as well with Gothitelle to kind of guarantee that it's going to stay out there for those three turns. So, that's something you'll have to think about, too. Like, if you do end up doing uh, a Parish Song or something like that, having Protect would be important because, again, you want to stay out on the field. So, that's kind of the play right there. But either way, Shadow Tag is great because you do prevent your opponent's from being able to switch out. So I think that's a really cool tech. Frisk is actually a pretty cool ability as well because you get to see what items your opponent is holding. So that actually has, you know, some really good use as well. So Frisk wouldn't be bad, but again, Shadow Tag, if you want to do like the Parish Song and, and all that kind of stuff, uh, I think that would be best. Um, in terms of items, uh, we did go with Mental Herb. Uh, there are a couple items that you can uh, go with as well because you know, Gothitelle Tell has that ability, but I think Mental Herb is great because it does kind of prevent you from not being taunted, you know? And obviously with Gothitelle Tell being a support mon, it has a lot of status moves, things that aren't actual attacks. So if you do get taunted, you're kind of stuck there. So, you know, you can't use Trick Room, you can't use Helping Hand, you can't use anything like that. So you're kind of stuck with that. So being able to have Mental Herb, especially if you're trying to set up Trick Room, means that you're going to block Taunt, so you're able to set that up. Um, in terms of actual moveset, I do always love having Fake Out on there. It's nice to be able to, uh, you know, make your opponent be able to flinch on that first turn if you need someone to, you know, not set something up or, or something like that. So having Fake Out is really, really nice. So I usually keep that on there. Obviously, like I said, it can be a Trick Room setter as well. So that's why we have Trick Room there. Um, there are a lot of other cool things that you could do too because, like again, if you want to run Trick Room, you can. If you want it to stop Trick Room, obviously you can have Trick Room on it as well because you can always set it at the same time they're doing it. So it sets Trick Room, but then reverses it so it goes back to normal. We did a lot of that in Sword Shield, which which was a lot of fun. Um, we could do that here too. I, I think that would be cool too. But, uh, but other than that, uh, that's kind of like the risky play because you don't know for sure if they're going to try to set it up or not. So you don't want to set their Trick Room for them. So... Other, other than that, you can always go with Taunt as well. Taunt's a great move. You know, of course, they could have the Mental Herb as well. And, you know, or like a Covert Cloak, which I guess Taunt wouldn't really get blocked by that. But um, other things like like a Flinch from a Fake Out would, would 
you know, kind of be blocked by that. So Taunt would actually be a good move to use as well. Um, but other than that, too, another thing that you could do is if you think their opponent actually has, you know, multiple Pokemon that can set Trick Room and you don't know which one is going to do it, you know, if you do have Trick Room on Gothitelle as well, you can always end up using, oh, it would be, I'm sorry, it's in the usually useless moves here, uh, but you can always end up using Imprison as well. So what that does is, while Gothitelle is out there, none of your opponents can use any of the moves that Gothitelle has, like, on its actual Pokemon right now. So in this case, it, no other Pokemon on your opponent's side would be able to use Fake Out, Trick Room, Helping Hand, or, uh, well, or whatever your, I guess, third and first move would ever be. You know, obviously, Fake Out and Helping Hand's on this, and we probably end up replacing, um, probably end up, well, maybe... Two hours later. Either way, Imprison would be on there. None of the other three moves that got the tell knows uh, would be able to use by your foes. So, you know, that's another way to do it as well if you think that they have multiple Pokemon that could do Trick Room. So, either way, I, I think that's really cool. Uh, if you don't want to do Trick Room at all, like, there are a lot of other great things that you could do. I mean, uh, there are a lot of great support uh, support moves that you use with, uh, like, fake tiers. You know, if you have a special attacker, it lowers your opponent's special defense by two stages. So it's nice because that's pretty much like doubling the power of what you're going to end up using with that special attack. So being able to use that and getting that first would be really cool. Uh, you can always have fling. So if you end up holding a berry that could, you know, up attack, up speed or, or up defense or, or something like that, you can use fling into your own Pokemon and be able to throw the berry into them. And that's really nice for a Pokemon that you want to kind of sweep the other team with. So that's another idea as well. Um, if you want to make it a healer even, you can go with Heal Pulse. That's always nice too. It has the ability to be a screen setter with light screen and reflect. Um, of course, I would typically use that or leave that up to like a Prankster Pokemon. But you know, this is always an option as well if you don't want to have a Prankster Pokemon on your team. Uh, you can do Trick even, like, I know we've done that before with uh, with Lagging Tail, but again, that really only works with Prankster because you get that extra priority. Otherwise, Got the Tells going last and trying to trick that on. Of course, you know, that's not going to matter a ton with the exception of the fact that you want to make sure Got the Tells out there for that last move. So, um, again, that's another thing that I would kind of relegate to a Prankster Pokemon, but another option that you could do as well. Um, Charm is another great move to lower an opponent's attack by two stages. Uh, Flatter, which is kind of like a swagger, but just for special attack. But it's a way to confuse your opponent um, and all that to be able to, you know. But you do, of course, up their special attack. But either way, my whole point with this, of course, Hypnosis too. That's always a good one. But point is, like, there are a lot of different support moves that Gothitelle has. So, you know, being able to pick four moves out of that is a difficult thing to do. So... Really, you kind of have to fine-tune it with the other five Pokemon that you're going to have or with what role you really want to kind of, you know, kind of take on the team. You know, so with this, again, I'm just kind of showing that there are a lot of different options that you can have with Gothitelle. But again, having the Mental Herb on there, I, I think is really important or something else to kind of break the effects of something like Taunt. So uh, again, something like that is really great. And I think Shadow Tag is a really cool ability as well. And again, because especially here, the only move that I thought to put on it especially with this got to tell is foul play. And the main reason for that, and even though it's a physical move, it, all it does is take the attack stat of your opponent into consideration for the damage. So really our attack stat doesn't really matter. It depends on what our opponent is. So having foul play is great because really we don't have to invest anything in attack or special attack. So that would be the only move that I would kind of put on this got to tell because again, it, it really doesn't take into account your stats. So that's another great thing. But moving on to like the more physical Gothitelle. Well, not physical, but more attack Gothitelle. Because it is not a physical Gothitelle by any means. It is a special attacker. Because really, you know, looking at its stats, it, it's really not that bad. And I should have looked at the stats in the beginning. I'm sorry I didn't do that. But, you know, it actually does have a good amount of bulk. I mean, its HP is at 70, which is kind of average. Maybe just a little below average. Uh, so that's not the greatest thing, but its defense is 95 and special defense is 110. I think that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's some pretty good bulk you're going to be able to stay out there. So even this got to tell here that doesn't have any EV investment in defense or special defense is actually still going to be pretty good and still pretty bulky. I think it'll be able to withstand a lot of hits. So, you know, I, with the item here, you see the Roselli Berry. You know, you could always put Focus Sash on there if you're really worried about it. But again, with this natural bulk... 
even if you get... I mean, I think I would be a little worried if you got, like, a Roy Moon that did a Flying Terra and did an Acrobatics into you. Okay, then you might get KO'd, but that's not extremely common. At least I don't think it will be. Although you will see Acrobatics on Roaring Moon. But I think with this bulk with Gothitelle, even as a fighting type, I, I, I think you're going to be okay. But um, I could be wrong. But in that case, you know, still, you can put the Focus Sash on it. Either way, my point is, you got pretty natural bulk. Its speed is really average at 64, really kind of below average. Kind of like what we did when we talked about Skeleturge. Um, but I did put 12 EVs in it, mainly because, uh, you know, if you do have a Gothitelle that you're going against, and they ended up putting the four, you know, EVs in speed, it, at least you're going to outspeed it a little more. I know it's a really dumb explanation, but, you know, it could potentially work. And then, of course, with the 244 uh, EVs and the uh, modest nature, that really ups your special attack uh, a bunch. And with a base 95 special attack, that's actually going to hit pretty hard. I mean, you guys can see at level 50, that goes up to 160. That's really not that bad when you think about it. Um, of course, with its ability, that makes it even better. Its ability is competitive, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have used competitive on a lot of other Pokemon that are much stronger than Gothitelle, but this uh, ability is really cool because anytime your uh, any of your stats get lowered at all, no matter what it is, your special attack is raised by two stages. So you're doubling your special attack, essentially. So... Uh, competitive is a really, really awesome ability. And that's why I didn't talk about it in the last one. I wanted to save it to this because I think it is a really cool ability. And again, if we're going to make this an attacker, you need to have that ability on it because competitive is an OP, man. This is really, really cool. So if we're going to go with moves, uh, again, I would definitely suggest um, using Protect on Gothitelle, but these moves that I have on it really are things that uh, really benefit this Gothitelle. So... Psychic, of course, is a stab move for it. You could always end up going with, uh, where is it? With uh, Psy Shock as well, uh, depending on, you know, again, who you think you might face. Uh, if you think you're going to face Pokemon that have a, a higher special defense, you could always go Psy Shock because that ends up calculating it based on their physical defense, but your special attack. So that's a really cool tech with that. So you can either do Psy Shock or Psychic. I put it on there because, again, I think it's a really great stab move, and and why not? It's It's got 10 extra power, and again, unless we know we're going to face a bunch of uh, special defense-heavy Pokemon, yeah, I, I think Psychic is probably the better move to have on it. Now, of course, as a stab move for the fighting, we can always put Focus Blast on it. It really doesn't get any other fighting moves that we can really use, unfortunately, I mean, it does also get Brick Break and Low Sweep, but they are physical moves, and needless to say, I don't want to put a physical move on Gothitelle, so uh, Focus Blast really is the way to go. However, if we also want to go the route of going with Terra Blast, we could always do that too. Same thing, so when we end up uh, Terrastalizing, that Terra Blast will become a fighting move. Again, it'll be 80 power. It will be a special attack because we are stronger in our special attack so we could always go that way so either way uh you can go with that again i think terror blast might be better just because of the accuracy and it seems like the accuracy in this game is is really kind of bugged a little bit so um, i want to make sure that we actually hit so using terror blast i think would probably be best now the other two moves that we have here are to kind of cover for our weaknesses when we are a fighting type now thunderbolt is great because we are able to hit the flying types for super effective damage that would be able to do super effective damage into us. And of course, if we terrestrialize that first turn and we hit them with that Thunderbolt and they don't hit us with the flying move, we're in the driver's seat here, you know? Of course, that's in singles with doubles. It might be a little more complex, but we won't talk about that. But either way, we can use Thunderbolt and it's great because you have the chance for paralysis as well. And the other one, of course, is Dark Pulse, and that is going to hit the Psychic types for super effective damage. And again, it also have that chance to make a Pokemon flinch as well. So being able to have that extra effect, I think, is really cool. And of course, that does cover for that Psychic weakness. Now, unfortunately, there is no move in the move pool that uh, covers for that Fairy weakness. Now, that's a really big problem, unfortunately. But that's why we have the Roselli Berry on it. So what that will do will make it so that one super effective fairy type move that goes into us will be weakened by a half. 
So that would be great. Of course, that only happens once. So that's that's a little bit of a problem. But I think that's something that really kind of covers us for that berry weakness as well. Of course, like I said as well, you can end up putting the Focus Sash on it if you are really worried about its bulk. Um, I think you might be okay. But at the same time, not 100% sure. So if you really want to play it safe, you could go Focus Sash. But Roselli Berry could be a good one too after you Terastalize because it is the only thing that can cover for that very weakness. But other than that, we do have the coverage again for the Thunderbolt or with the Thunderbolt and the Dark Pulse as well. And so if you did want to go with an attack heavy Gothitelle, this could be a pretty good EV spread as well as a move pool. Um, you could end up taking out one of these um, if you, for some reason, don't care about Terror Blast or you don't really care about Dark Pulse because you might have, um, you know, you might have another Pokemon that could cover you for one of those weaknesses. Um, you could do that, take that out and put Protect in because I think Protect could be really important too. Um, but either way, um, Gothitelle does have some pretty good moves on it. And again, at a 95 base special attack, I, I, th I think that's pretty good. You know, once you almost max out its EVs and everything, I mean, again, this one isn't maxed, it's short by one, but this one's at 160, which means that when it is maxed out, it would be 161. So that's actually a pretty high special attack. So I think Gothitelle could actually make it with that, especially with competitive. If you end up doing something to like lower something, like if you do like a bulldoze and lower the uh, the speed of Gothitelle, part of me, then hey, you lower the speed and then with competitive, raise your special attack two stages and wipe your opponents off the field. I think that'd be a really cool thing. So uh, this would be a really interesting th thing to do, especially since most people think of Gothitelle as a supporter and mainly just that and not much of an attacker. So if you want to surprise some people, I think this Gothitelle could be a lot of fun. But these really are our builds here. Uh, again, Gothitelle really is more of a support Pokemon. Um, but if you do want to build it out to be an attacker, I think that would be really cool. I think if I saw that on the ladder and I got beat by a Gothitelle, that really was its main attacker. Dude, I would have so much respect for that. I think that would be really cool. So don't be surprised if you actually see us try that too. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to go down and drop a like and we'll see you guys next time.